Welcome to step two. In this step, what I want to do is just take a look at the interface. In Maya, as you can see, just by default, there's a lot going on. I just want to quickly tell you what each part of this interface is for and what it does, and then we'll be able to move on to a bit more of the nitty gritty. So let's start with right here up at the top. This is just your standard Windows menu bar. So we've got your usual kind of file, edit, create, select, modify, display, windows. And these have all got sort of consistent things in the menu. But after that, you've got things like mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools. And these are all related to the modeling menu set. The thing about Maya is it has so many different options. They don't all fit across the top. So it sorted them into categories using this drop down box just here. So you can see that by default we're on modeling, which is where I want us to be, but there are others. So there is rigging, and you'll see that the options over here change. We've got animation, effect, rendering, and you can also customize your own menu set as well. For now, we'll just go back to modeling. We've got across the top some fairly common options. So things like new, save, undo, redo. We've got some different snapping options. Uh, and then these are related to rendering materials. We'll get into them all later. Below that, we've got this area here, which is called the shelf. And it's just a tabbed way of arranging shortcuts to our tools that we'll use for certain things. So by default, we've started in the poly modeling one, and this shows us some of the primitive shapes we can create and some of the ways that we can modify them. There's also the similar sort of thing for curves, which is another way of modeling. Sculpting, which is another way of modeling. Then we've got rigging, animation. And again, for this, if you want to, you can set up your own custom shelves. So we'll just put that back on poly modeling for now. This big space here in the middle is called the viewport. And this is where you view what you're working on. So there are some things that we can do for it. The viewport's got its own menu and we can do things like turn display options on and off. We can change the type of camera we're using. There's a lot going on in here. We'll get into that as we go further through the tutorial. Down the left hand side, you've got really common tools. So you've got a couple of selection methods here. So you've got normal selection tool. You've got your lasso tool, which is you can just draw a lasso around what you want to select. You've also got your paint selection tool, which allows you to paint components. So things like vertices or edges or faces and select them that way. I though, in the years I've been using it, I've hardly ever used these bottom two. I've got other ways that I like to work. And then the next three are fairly important ones. You've got your move tool, which is used to move things around, your rotate tool, and your scale tool. Again, we'll cover these more as we start to use them. You've also got some default views, and I think there are fewer here than there used to be. So this is the one that we're currently on now, which is the one pane which has a perspective view in it. There's also what's called the four view, which we'll come back to later. You've got a side-by-side -side view, which we'll call the two view. Is that what they call it in Maya? I don't know. And then we've got um, the same sort of view, but it adds an outliner as well. We'll go back to this view here. Oh, let's just um, hide that. Over on the right hand side, this is called the channel box and will probably be what you're seeing by default if you've just opened Maya. And this gives you settings and options for things that you have selected. We also have some tabs down here. So there's a modeling toolkit which has a lot of tools that are used within modeling, which kind of makes sense. And there's the attribute editor, which also gives you ways of selecting and changing the properties of certain things. Sometimes you need the attribute editor, sometimes you need the channel box. And again, we'll touch on these later as they become relevant. Down at the bottom, this is your timeline, and this is used for animation. So you can see this is just counting the frames. We've got some controls for it here some further controls. This is all to do with animation in the timeline. This is your time slider. This tells you how many frames you've got in total. We've currently got 200 and how many frames you're displaying from one to 120. And then down here, this just displays important information. So that's pretty much the interface, but you can change it depending on what you're doing. So up at the top, you've got the workspace dropdown. And by default, you'll probably start in Maya Classic which is the one that I learned to use way, way in the past. Uh, but now they have different options. And I'm going to suggest that moving forward, we switch to modeling standard. And what this does is just streamlines the interface a little bit. We've lost all the animation stuff because we don't need that. 
We've also got the modeling toolkit open for us and the attribute editors open here as well. We can also get the outliner when we need it, which we will at some point going forward. Right, I think that brings us to the end of this step. Well done for sitting through it. It didn't really give you much to do, but hopefully you've got a better idea of what all the different elements of the workspace are, because we will be using a lot of them moving forward. Okay, next we're going to prepare to start making things by creating a project and saving a scene. Two really important steps. And these are the first things that you should do when starting any 3D modeling work in Maya. So let's take a look at that next. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.